Hello to everybody, and welcome back to Ragnarok Battle Offline. So, I'll be continuing today with the Archer class. And I'm still unsure which one I want to use just because I really like using both. They're both really cool in their own way. I wish there was like a mix where they had both classes put together because they both have really cool abilities. Um, however, I think the male Archer might be the better one out of the two. I say that. Uh, screw it, I'm being the female. Just for old time's sake, I'll be the female archer. Uh, so, let's see here. I'll call her... Let's call her... Uh, can I call her Crimson? Does that work? Yes, it does. I'll call her Crimson. Alright, why not? I like Crimson. Um... Okay, so, if I'm correct, archers use dexterity for their damage, agility is going to be good for them, and vitality. Those are some good stats. Intelligence is going to be alright. Strength is going to be slightly required just for basic attacks, but dexterity is what, it, what does their arrow damage, and arrows is what you're going to be using the most. So, let's put a bit more damage to the dex here, a bit more into agility. There we go. I said that will be a good start. Uh, arrow crafting is a requirement when it comes to the archer. You have to have arrow crafting. If you do not, you'll only have a limited of 10 arrows for the entire level. And if you only have 10 arrows for the entire level, you are screwed. You will not be able to kill everything with 10 arrows. You probably won't be able to even kill a single boss with 10 arrows. Arrow crafting allows you to craft arrows throughout the mission, and at higher level it is, the more arrows you craft. Um, you can only have up to 10 arrows equipped at a time, if I'm correct. Uh, if you have a merchant, the merchant can, as a partner, the merchant can increase that. But I am playing solo, so I'll have to deal with the limited 10 or 20 arrows you can have. So, yeah. Owl's Eye increases how much damage your arrows do, just generally. I'm pretty sure it just it's just It's like the sword mastery in uh, with the uh, swordsman. And Double Strafe allows you to shoot two magical arrows. Uh, the magical arrows are, are separate from the arrows you have, so you don't have to worry about running out when using it. But it does cause mana or skill points or whatever it's called. So I'll be taking Owl's Eye. Double Strafe isn't that important in the first level. You don't really need it. Your arrows do quite a bit of damage on their own. So, And let's begin to the part. The Archer class is the class that I understand the most just because I've played the Archer class the most out of all the classes and it's the first class I ever beat the game with. So Prontera Field. Okay, so... For the archer, the way it works, first of all, arrow crafting. Okay, so I can have 20. All right. Oh, more than 20? I thought I could only have 20. Oh, 30. Oh, what? I can have 50? Oh, wow. I thought I could only have like 20. Weird. I think you can. I think if you have a merchant, though, it can go up to 99, though. I know that for a fact. So, yeah. But wow, 50. Yeah, I'll be fine for a bit. So the archer. So you have your basic attacks. Bam, 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 bam. She can't run, just like other class, like like a few other classes. She can't run. You have your strong attacks, which usually just has you kicking and punching. The main focus, though, as an archer, however, is the fact that you can shoot arrows. So I can shoot forward. I can shoot slightly down. I can shoot arrows in the air. The archer, your main thing as an archer is you're going to be shooting arrows all the time. They do a lot of damage, as you can tell. 560 this early on, it's pretty good. And yeah, uh, I don't have anything too special with the arrows yet. You do get other ways of f firing arrows later, I'm pretty sure, if you, as you upgrade your stats. And of course, your special abilities will give you other things too. Uh, one example to note is that the archer, the female archer tends to shoot downwards diagonally. The male archer tends to just shoot downwards, like straight down. And on the ground, as you can see, I shoot slightly downward diagonally like that. Um, the male archer would just crouch down and just shoot forward instead. So, that's what they do. Like, the, the archer tends to shoot more straight forward. Like, shoot straight ahead or straight down. The female archer tends to mix down and up, uh, down and forward. So, you can, like, do this a lot, which is pretty good. Um, but yeah, we'll see when I do the male playthrough. I kind of decided that I want to do both male and females once I complete the game. I'll, I'll, do, the, I'll do the male playthroughs after. I kind of just want to 100% this game. I really do. Uh, it's been so long that I haven't played this game, and I, I just really want to do it all. It's a fun game to play. I really enjoy it. So, yeah. And now I'm like enjoying it even more than before because now that I understand it better, I'm not like some young kid who's like very low attention span. So let's do this. All right. So moving on once again. 
So yeah, you won't be seeing me doing a lot of combos. I mean, I can like go in and like punch things, but it doesn't do a lot of damage. Like 100 compared to 500. Yeah. It's mostly like during bosses I'll be doing that. Also, as you can see, I have way less range than the Swordsman. The Swordsman, you, you might not like, you might actually underestimate just how, uh... Wait, can I shoot forward in the air? I can. She's just not as good at it, though. If I do a quick attack in the air, I can shoot forward in the air like that. Intriguing. I didn't know that. So quick attack forward in the air allows us to shoot forward. That's pretty cool. But I'm pretty sure the male archer does more damage or something like that. When, he, when he's in the air like that. She does better when she shoots downwards. I know the male archer can't shoot downwards like that. Like, he just shoots straight down under him. So you can go, like, on top of an enemy and just keep shooting arrows down at him. But yeah, the female archer has a little bit more versatility, though. She has more range to her attacks, basically. But the male archer can generally do longer combos with his arrows. If he, uh... Like, right now, if I was a male archer, I'd just be shooting down on the one guy, and it wouldn't matter. But as you can tell, arrows are pretty strong. This is why I probably beat the game. I mean, the Swordsman's a really good class to start with, because he's so easy to use. But the Archer's a pretty good class to use as well, just because of how safe the Archer is. I would say those are the two main classes you want to start with, because they're the easiest classes to use and the safest classes to use. Like, I just do this with this guy. A moment. There's a freaking rabbit. Especially, the one thing is that if you don't get arrow crafting, you're screwed. So I would be out of arrows now. But see how safe this is? Especially if you build a lot of dexterity. And the reason why I don't usually put as much vitality as I did with the Swordsman is because I'm not going to be getting hit as much. Because I'm usually not going to be in the middle of a fight. It's also easier to avoid attacks with the Archer. Just because you can just sit there and do that. Of course, I want to upgrade my arrow crafting layer so I don't just make three arrows at a time. I can make like seven arrows at a time or something like that. I can make a lot of arrows by the end. And there you go. Oh, big guy somewhere. Okay, let's kill them. Of course, you know, you don't have to just only shoot arrows. You can, of course, punch things that get close to you. It's just, if you can, you'd rather avoid letting that happen. Just because arrows are broken. Alright, so he's dead. Of course, it's the first level, so there's not that much to talk about. You know, it's just a very simple straightforward level. This guy is going to die pretty quick. I think especially because I can just jump up into the air and just shoot him while he's doing his little dance thing, so. I just do this. Please don't hit me with that stuff. I'm pretty sure if you time it just right, you can actually kind of like go up in the air slightly. Let's craft some arrows. That's another thing too is that the female archer shoots really fast in the air. As you can tell, like you can shoot way faster in the air than you could if you're on the ground. That's a lot slower. This is the fastest you can do. So, you know, take advantage of the fact that as in the air the female archer is really good. I don't know if the male archer shoots as fast in the air. I don't think so. I think he's actually slower when he's in the air. But he shoots really fast on the ground. His arrows do more damage, I think, too. At the cost of having less Versatility with it, but I'm not sure. I have to try him out. I didn't use the male archer that much. Now this is where the swordsman kind of did better. Is this because of the fact that you know I can just stand under? But if I'm doing this, I can just shoot like this, and at least I stay safe and I don't get slowed down and potentially put in danger. Although it does become annoying when you get close to the end, because that means you have to be really precise with your arrows. There we go. Wait, I don't know how much damage I do to him. Damn it! I messed up. I'm pretty sure if you get to like the higher levels, you can actually do like two to three damage to him if you get strong enough. And that's pretty fun. It shows just how strong you are compared to before. Right, so he's dead. I could probably just shoot four with some of these guys. Yeah, there we go. Some of them are dead there. And then you die. And then finally, man, he's dead. These mushrooms aren't dying. Ow! Jerk. Get over here. Let me beat you to death. It is kind of weird to be playing a character that doesn't really have combos on the ground, just because, you know. Like, she barely attacks. Because, you know, arrows. This might also be the class that's the most boring to watch, just because I'm shooting arrows all over the place, and that's all I'm going to be really doing the entire time. But hey, I wanted to beat the game with every single character, and I will beat the game with every single character. I will stand by the decision. 
How am I not hitting the mushroom guy? Jerk. He's dead. Mushrooms are slightly too small, apparently, which sucks. Alright, and now the last little guy, which is probably gonna be like a- oh, he's a bee. Okay, that's really easy to kill. So now it's gonna be the slug thing, right? Yes. Alright, so this is the most boring boss. I might even just cut this out. Yeah, I'm gonna cut this out. Alright, and we're back. So yeah, it's just- I killed him in like five arrows. He's the most boring boss in the game, just because it's such a dumb... It's like, once you figure him out, he's not any sort of threat. This is a little bit more of a fun boss, because it's a flying boss. That's probably why they put two bosses on there next. Wow, I'm, I'm doing a lot of damage. See how little damage that does, though? 200 damage compared to, uh, like, the 500 I normally do if I do this? It goes to show just how much of a difference that that makes. So you really want to abuse the fact that you can be in the air like this. Your arrow shots are actually stronger too. I tried to get the slug. Uh, on the ground, they do about 400 at this point, and I, on the air, I'm doing about 600. So, yeah, this is definitely a lot stronger in the air like this. Oh, I killed him with a kick. Huh. All right. So yeah, I need to be jumping as much as possible to do as maximum damage as as much ma as much damage as possible. Oh yeah, and we're at the end. There we go. See, first level, not that long. Ah, oh, excuse me. Eclipse. Oh god. There we go. I was making. I wasn't inputting the the command correctly. I wasn't holding down correctly. There we go. One thing to note, of course, as an archer, I have less health than the swordsman, so I cannot take hits as much. So I gotta be especially careful of dodging attacks. Just because you will die otherwise. Is there something vibrating in my room? Ah, I'm immune to your attacks because I can just stay in the air and avoid everything. Uh oh. Damn freaking bunnies. There you go. Alright, so this is song. I guess it might have been the music, and it just wasn't really... I gotta, I gotta find time to craft my arrows. Can I craft them on the ground too? Yeah, I can. Well, I can do it while crouching. It doesn't really change the animation or anything. Then to jump. Oh, it's the freaking like, harp or whatever in the background. Okay, so... That's the problem with boss fights. You usually have to start finding the time to craft arrows during the boss fight, which is pretty cool. That's where the difficulty comes in, is finding the time to craft. And you have all these little guys like these guys, and they become a little annoying to do. There we go. Alright, so now I should be able to- Oh, that's what the freaking stuff is. It like blocks projectiles. Ah. And he's dead. Alright. So of course, that was a really easy level. Once you've seen the later levels, this is really easy stuff. And level up. Yes. Good. That was a pretty good level. Didn't die, barely got hit. Hit stop, cancel, save, and quit. Yes. And there you go. Let's move straight on to the next level after leveling up. Okay, come on. There you go. So, check stats. I definitely put some points into decks, and I put all my points into decks. I don't want to do that. Uh, I, had, I put it as 16, I thought I had it as 15. Whoops. Right, let's put two points into that. One point of agility, one point of vitality. There we go. Uh, double strafe, I'll put a point into and put another point into arrow crafting. The reason why I want to put a point into arrow crafting is because during later boss fights, you won't have as much time to craft arrows. So you're really going to want to take advantage of the fact that you can create a lot of arrows in a single go, just so that you can always have arrows at the ready during the entire fight. Because uh, usually you won't use more than like 10 arrows in a single go of shooting arrows, like in a single like round of arrows. So if you have like 50 arrows, the only reason why I can't start running a little near that other boss fights because I didn't have I wasn't crafting first of all during the fight after every round or so after every round of arrows. And second of all, because I'm not able to craft fast enough, so I'm shooting more arrows than I'm crafting. But once this gets maxed out, I can craft pretty quick. So double shift, you want to start leveling up just because double shift is a powerful ability, but it also unlocks an even more powerful ability later on, which is a really good ability to have. Not as strong as the male version. I think the male version is stronger against bosses and the female version is stronger against enemies, but it's still a good ability to have nonetheless. 
Anyways, let's get into the first, you know, sort of difficult level. As the archer, it's actually, this level is really easy compared to the swordsman. The only, there's only one boss that really worries me during this level when I'm playing as the archer. Alright, so all these little guys. Ow. Also, double strafe. I'm gonna try to do it right now. There you go. So that's what it is. You shoot two magical arrows, and as you can tell, it doesn't actually cost any arrows to do. I'll do it one more time here. Oh, does it cost an arrow? No, it doesn't. See, so I had seven. I use it now. So that's six. Still six. There you go. Yeah. The main reason why it looked like it was running out is because I kept shooting at the same right after doing it. So let's see. Now I'm creating four arrows at a time, right? Yeah, four arrows every shot. Which is better, but I still want to have it even harder than that because four arrows still takes a while. There we go. So maxed out. I don't know how. Don't ask me how spinning the thing creates arrows. It just does. Just accept the fact that it does, and move on with your life. And he's gonna run away. And I've tried. I don't think you can actually hit him even when he's off the map. Yeah, he's immune when off the map as well. Even with arrows, he can't. Freaking little chickens. Is there, isn't there a way to shoot forward on the ground? No, I think it's only the male arch that can do that. Yeah, it looks like it. Let me just punch these chickens to death. Alright, so let's fight the hardest boss in the entire goddamn game. And let's just overkill him, because I want to. <laughs> Wasn't worth the arrow. Alright. Moving on. Some bigger guys here. I think you can just shoot them forward, or is he like the... Yeah, I should be able to shoot them. I guess, oh yeah. Um, arrows do eventually fall down, like in the air, if you shoot it. The arrow will eventually just like fall. You can't really see it here. But uh, yeah, the arrows do actually start falling as they go farther down. So eventually, they, they, they can go across an entire level. If you have, if you're playing two players and two players separate really far away from each other, you can usually see it. These are gonna be really easy to kill because they can't even hit me while I'm in the air like this. And dead. And crap, 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 crap. There you go. Because basically what happens is that for every four arrow, um, every three times you craft with four arrows, it counts as the same as having crafted four times with, with three arrows, basically. So, it's pretty good. Something like that. I don't know. I'm not an expert at math. I'm good at it, but I'm slow at it. He's not dead. Oh, because I'm shooting on the ground. Right. Oh, big guy. You're gonna die? Three arrows, that's all it takes to kill these guys. It shows how powerful the freaking archer class is. Just so much damage. You'd think like the swords would be the one of the primary damage dealers, but no, he's more of a tank. The archer really is like one of the primary damage dealers. If not the highest damage dealer in the entire group here. Out of all the characters. I think the merchant and the sorcerer are probably other uh, contestants for that. Uh oh. Oh god, yeah. Gotta watch out for that. Should be killing him soon. I know he has a lot of health, but still. Come on. Alright, let's double strafe him. Yeah, that was fair enough. Oh god, this is gonna hurt. Yeah, that hurts. Now oh, that's half my health. I'm hitting the wrong guy. No, that's not good. Oh god, jump. So he's gonna shoot that. Let's dodge it. This is where the difficulty of the archer comes in. Very enclosed spaces with bosses that have a lot of range. There, he's dead. Block. No, it's not just a swordsman that can block. The archer can block too. Now it's just a matter of killing this guy. Can I double strafe in the air? I don't think so. No, I didn't I didn't think I could. I don't I don't think I can. Come on, buddy. You can die. I know you can do it. I'm blocking the air? I can. I forgot about that. Right, I was doing that against uh, the freaking uh, what's his face in uh, the water level that stops time. That jerk? Yeah, him. Yeah. 
I just killed the big one before the other two got angry. <laughs> That's how easy it is to kill these things. Do I kill them in one hit? I think I kill them in one hit if I hit them hard enough. If I get a lucky enough like RNG in number. That's the baby one dead. And now you're gonna die. I kicked you in the face. Alright. Moving on. This is probably be the shortest of the of the uh, the levels, like of like the different like playthroughs, just because the archer just goes through these levels so goddamn fast. She's just so strong. The ants though are definitely an annoyance, just because you can't really shoot them with the arrows easily, and doesn't help that they're hard to see too. Oh, scorpion! Oh boy, I forgot that you were here. Ow! Oh my god, I got hit by a scorpion. That makes me sad. No, shoot arrows. Thank you. There we go. Oh, no, I'm gonna kick him. There we go. He's dead. Let's craft a few arrows. Or just go over here somewhere. Oh, there he is. Let's just do that. There we go. Now he's dead. Tiny little enemies. They're probably one of the worst enemies for archers because they're hard to, hard to hit. But thankfully, I can just do this. Just slowly go across the entire thing. And hopefully, they don't hit me and start, like, stun locking me. Because they can do that. They can stun lock you. Ow. Ooh, health. That's gonna be helpful. Yep. And there you go. Okay, cool. Now it's gonna be the worm, right? I think it's the worm boss thing. Yeah, there we go. The worm is way easier to as the archer. It's so easy to avoid them. The ants are gonna be the biggest problem. All right, kill the ants. No, shoot arrows. Thank you. I'm trying to hit this ant here, but I'm I'm failing miserably at it. Come on, there we go. That's just a matter of doing this, basically. God damn it! I'm trying to shoot arrows and I'm failing miserably at it. Get your arrows crafted while he's in the ground. When he comes out, just come up and start shooting him. And then craft arrows and just rinse and repeat this. I can see why some people would consider the archer a boring class to play though. I personally like just standing back and shooting things, it's one of my more favorite things to do. I always like playing as like support, long range, helping kind of rows, rules. like when other people are going into the front I just stand back and snipe. I've always been like a sniper in shooting games, like armor and that kind of stuff, if I can I'll be a sniper, if, the, if it's like kind of required, and stuff like that. And uh, like you know, lockdown positions and stuff like that. Or uh, watch for enemy movement, all that kind of stuff. Scouting, all that kind of stuff. Always one of those. I've never, I've never been to my. I mean, I can. I don't get me wrong. I can enjoy being a, a, a super powerful, tough swordsman, charging into battle and cutting down hundreds of enemies and being impossible to kill. Do not get me wrong. I can always love a tank bruiser class. I can. But uh, you know, if I had to choose between the two, I would usually choose. Uh, I would usually choose the more supportive long range class. But least favorite class to play are like. Uh, are like the rogue classes, or like, you know, um, engineers and stuff like that, depending on how it's done, like depending on how, how the classes are made. Like in, um, in Team Fortress 2, I think my least favorite class, other than the Grenadier, I don't really like playing the Grenadier just because I don't like the grenade mechanic and having to balance grenades and all that kind of stuff, I'm not a big fan of that. But other than that, I would say my least favorite class to play would probably be the Engineer. Just because I don't like the idea of putting down a... I, don't get me wrong, I do like the idea of putting down a turret and having the turret to destroy everything. It's just a matter of like... That's kind of all you're doing. <laughs> you're just you're just putting stuff up and just keeping them built. That's all you're doing the entire time. Like, And you can only put like one turret down. Like, I prefer building up uh, an arsenal. If there's a class like an engineer, it's usually because I want to build up like multiple turrets and just keep upgrading and keep going and going and going and going and keep making myself more and more powerful and keep making more and more crazy stuff. You know, a class that can build a bunch of robots? Hell yeah, I'll just have a bunch of robots and uh, and just like uh, and just keep building more and more robots until it gets to a ridiculous number, you know? Or something like that. Um, 
other roles I don't like are roles that have very limited use of their like super abilities and stuff like that. Like I like being able to constantly do unique things. So if I have to like only use my super thing like once, and the rest of, and I have to like really wait for the right time to do it, then I won't play that class. Or um, uh, I'm trying to think of another example of something. Uh, I had it in my head. Uh, or like one click, one button clicking kind of classes. Like don't get me wrong, I know the archer feels that way, but I feel like I'm like I like long range. I like having to jump up and like try to angle my shots and stuff like that. But like a class like an MMORPG where you just like left click an enemy to death, and that's all you do is just left click and never do anything else. Or like all you do is just buff yourself and just left click forever. I don't like that. I like actively attacking enemies. I don't like buffing myself and just making my basic attack stronger. Unless the buffs are cool, like transformations, or they they change how your left clicking works. You know, like if you have to actually strategize the buff, it's not just apply everything and forget. You know. Then I don't mind, but like if it's just apply every single buff and then it just attacks, then it's like eh. Like the thing I like, I like interactivity. I like being able to interact. Like I don't like just sitting there and doing nothing. I like to be able to actually have to think my moves through, or at least have to like react accordingly. Like if the boss does this move, then I have to apply this buff. If the boss does this move, I have to apply this buff. You know, like if I have to switch between buffs and things like that, that's that's okay. You know. Alright, so, I think a good example would actually be League of Legends, um, there was a, I guess in the older times in League of Legends, like, a lot of carries, like, I think, like, Ash especially was one of them, um, were like, oh, I'm gonna die, oh, I'm not dead, oh my god, oh my god, okay, maybe I should start focusing a bit more. Give me a second as I focus. I don't want to die because it's a lot. That's, I lose experience that way. Ugh, I'm missing her. No, I don't want to jump. Shit. No! I screwed myself over by being in that corner, not moving. Ah, fuck. <laughs> okay, well, that sucks. Alright. That's fine. I should probably be able to kill her soon. I'm just gonna jump, then I'm just gonna stab. I need to make arrows. Is gonna do the walk now or no the stab? Right, freak. Okay, keep building. Jump! Oh my god, I suck at dodging that. Now the walk, okay. Freaking ant. Oh my god, I I'm doing really bad here. I'm not doing anywhere near as much damage as I should be doing to her. There we go. That's all I need was another three freaking arrows. Alright. Yeah, well, that's enough of that uh, whole. Uh, of the whole, uh, what's your favorite class in games? Basically, just classes that just click and nothing else, or classes that are very, like, use and forget, you know? Like, I'd rather have to think things through, or at least, like, feel like I'm interacting, or I'm actively doing stuff. As long as I feel like I'm actively doing stuff, like, I'm, I'm like, using combos, or I'm actively moving and attacking, and things like that. Like, the Swordsman was fun, even though the Swordsman was very simple, just attack, attack, attack. I felt like I, you know, I had like combos I was doing, or like at least I understood how the character worked to the degree to like know like, oh, I have to do this and this, or I have to, I can make sure I don't do this attack during a boss because if I do, I'll leave myself open, stuff like that. You know, very simple class, but very fun to use just because, hey, the other thing thinks through a bit. So arrow shower, that's the move I wanted. Arrow shower. I'm gonna have to increase my owl's eye next time, but arrow shower is a really fun move to use. I need to remember how to use it though. 